how's your summer going so far ah oh, summer is great <laughs> you went zip lining right yeah yep I went zip lining for the first time how's that I almost killed myself <laughs> oh no no I almost lost some fingers I think because I grabbed onto the wrong line oh no glove that's supposed to help go across a zip line got stuck in the motor thing and came off luckily just the glove got caught and then I was stuck in the middle of the zip line with a huge drop underneath me and I couldn't go anywhere because I was had this glove stuck in the thing so I had to wrench on it for about five minutes and get it out and then I had to pull myself to safety how how high up were you 50 feet maybe 100 feet well that was something fun huh yeah <laughs> it's a story adventure <clears throat> gotta have adventure man. hello everybody and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where I forgot what we were doing. All right, so here we are, here we go. So today we are going to be having a talk, a little fun chat with Mindy Simmonson, poet, booktuber, Instagram personality at Mindy's Book Journey. She is the poet who penned Skeletons, the center section chapbook inside of issue two of the Bloodshed Review, which is available at my Etsy shop. Links down below. And she was also a supporting poet in Bloodshed Review issue one. If you liked that, you'll love the us. There's a lot of other stuff that I want to talk about. First, episode 100 is right around the boner. So I need you guys, I need you guys to send in your questions on a voice memo so I could play it on the motherfucking show. Okay? I'm getting blown up over here. Over here. Um, Next thing next, Drinking Less, my July chapbook, is out now. Not only as a print version, but also as a digital version and also as an audio version. The audio version is free to listen to on my YouTube page. The digital version is on my Etsy shop as well as this print version. Now let me tell you about the print version real quick. This print version is limited to 45 copies. The first 20 are going to be numbered, but each copy has its own individual unique wine stain on the cover. It's in a different place on all of them. Okay, so you will be holding in your hand a one of a kind piece of art. And if you're one of the first 20, signed by me. And I'm trying to remember how many is left. I don't know because I was supposed to go to the post office today. Didn't do it. I'm going tomorrow because the, my building wrote me this morning and said they're shutting the water off tomorrow on one of the hottest days of the year. So I'm going to do all my outside shit tomorrow when there's no water instead of doing it today. So get this at the link down below. Blood Rag issue 13 is still out, of course, and so is 1 through 12 for fuck's sake. Next month, not only are we going to have the Blood Rag issue 14, but we're also going to have the start of Bunny Wild's reign as Poet of the Year. So her one sheet rag will also be out and sent to anyone who makes any orders on my Shopee. It's so fucking hot, and I know it's hotter at other places, but I don't have air conditioning. It's hot. And because I'm a douchebag, and I don't drink water as much as I should, I'm just drinking coffee and beer. And I'm almost out of both. So, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a trekkie trek trek to the to the little old store. I think I'll go to 7-Eleven. It's cheaper, even though I fucking hate that place. So things that have been going on on the YouTubes that I want you guys to know about, um, in case y'all missed it, in case y'all missed it, I've been posting all sorts of fun shit up on my YouTube. So since the last time we spoke, I can't remember which one of these I did first, but um, why are you struggling writing poems? Five truths. 
there's that. Two mistakes every new poet makes, there's that. And the funny thing is, most of the comments I've been getting on these things are, I feel called out. Like, I feel like you're calling me out specifically. I don't know why that is. I haven't done any of these things to specifically target anybody. But it's shocking how many people will say the same thing on the same video. So obviously, I'm not picking anyone out in particular. But if you notice that you're doing some of these things that I'm talking about, maybe think about ways to change those things, like it says. Um, let's see here. Have better poetry readings. Because basically, everyone fucks up how to do a fucking poetry reading. They fuck it up all the fucking time. It drives me nuts. And then, of course, there's the Drinking Less audiobook. On the poet vlog, it was a lot of me printing books and getting ready to go to this event at this um, poetry library in South Central down here. So that's kind of fun because it was like day in the life where I'm like going as fast as humanly possible to get as much shit done as I can and then going to the event. And then the one that seems to be causing a bit of a stir this morning... Um, was the release of the video. Is Ocean Vong actually good? You get to watch me watch Ocean Vong read and talk about if I think Ocean Vong is good. So I'm sure you guys are all chomping at the bit to find out what I think about that. And then also tomorrow, is it tomorrow or Wednesday? Oh yeah, because tomorrow heaviest, boardiest, third installment um, of Heavy Board is going to come out. And then I have a um, book haul where um, I talk about Oh, You Thought This Was a Date by C. Russell Price and The Hatred of Poetry by Ben Lerner. So if you're interested in my thoughts on those books, jump on over, damn it, see, see? All right, um, and then <laughs> some other videos that uh, are going to be coming up here soon is yeah there's actually quite a few videos that i have stashed away here and i'm going to be recording a couple more when i'm done here the video about me talking about bad takes and old poems that's coming a watch along with me um with uh taylor hackford's 1973 bukowski documentary um the full documentary so there's that um another poet vlog and i can't remember what's in that one which is shocking because I think I just... Oh, shit. It's very personal. Yes, it is a very personal thing. I'm um, talking about my boundaries that I need to set with other people. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely check that out. And then I got a question. How do you know when a poem's done? And so I did a video where I talked about what I think you do and what others think you should do and then kind of like the happy medium because I know not everyone's going to want to do stuff the way I do it so I try to go across the spectrum here and then bring you into something there and then because I was doing that video I got on this like huge kick and rant about how often one should publish and I tried to make this as broad as possible because I feel like novelists will have an easier time understanding the things that I'm saying because for some reason the poetry community just can't get their fucking head around how fucking analytics work and how algorithms work it just doesn't make any fucking sense to them and like I'm telling you guys I'm telling the poets out there if you don't adapt you will die I don't know how many times I need to fucking scream this from the rooftops. Like, even if you took an ounce of the information I give in that video on how often you should publish, I feel like that would fucking help you out a lot and at least not make you obsolete in the next year and a half with how technology is moving. You know, someone might go, drop an X over there on X.com. And maybe someone will re-exit. This is brand new. I just heard about this this morning. So, you know. Let, let me, let me like, roll around in my, like, 
thinking that the demise of Twitter is fucking hysterical. Shit, if Twitter goes down, maybe um, all the people bitching about the last episode will shut the fuck up. Am I right? Am I right, guys? Am I right? Oh, wait, not the last episode, but episode 91. You know who I'm talking to. You know who I'm talking to. Another thing that is going to be coming out here quite shortly, I'm going to record it as soon as I'm done with this massively long intro, is a talk about mistakes people make with their first collection. And I normally see this with people's first collection. Normally by their second collection, they stop doing this. But I have seen people do it in their second collection and even their third. And they don't understand why their books aren't selling. So that's going to be um, a big one because I'm actually really pissed off about it. And I'm going to fucking like really fucking lay the law down because I, I just I feel like this is like a common sense thing that for some reason artists don't understand whatever your fucking discipline is. Just people just don't fucking get it. So it's going to be some tough love shit because a lot of you motherfuckers need it. And I'm just trying so fucking hard to help you guys and be nice to you guys. But, like, I repeat myself over and over again. And some of the people I repeat myself to hear me all the fucking time. And then continue to do the same fucking things that they were doing to make them need my help in the fucking first place. You could lead a horse to water, but you can't pull its pants down and fuck it. Am I right, guys? Am I fucking right, guys? Jesus fucking Christ. Now that I've completely fucking had a mini meltdown here. A mini meltdown. I keep fucking up the Anarchy Crew Zoom calls. Because basically what we do in the Anarchy Crew on Fridays, we have a live stream where we just talk and whatever. And I give everyone updates like behind the scenes on Poetic Anarchy Press shit. And then the members go and do a Zoom call together where I give like a writing prompt and then we write for a certain amount of minutes and then we read what we wrote and we do other shit <clears throat> and all this other stuff. I'm supposed to be recording these videos or recording these calls and then putting them up on the members only section of YouTube so people in Anarchy Crew who miss the fucking things can come and like take part after the fact and out of the last four sessions i've forgotten to fucking record three of them so i am at fault but let's just all do this now whenever we go into an anarchy crew zoom everyone just start typing in the fucking text or in the chat or just fucking start yelling Hit the fucking record button. I'm going to try to just set it to record. Because I used to have it set up like that. And then I had to reinstall it. And then it just never went back on. I don't know what's going on. These things are crazy. <sighs> um, I did a video on one of the things we did. So I got to see if that's going to work. For me to just put up. I should just fucking put it up. So maybe I'll do that too. Lots of stuff in the fucking pipe here. And also n next month is um, not only am I going to have like another chapbook release, but also the big release of Poetry is Bullshit, A Poetic Anarchist Guide to Writing Poems by yours truly will be available on the Zon. So I, I just got to finish that up. And like all things, I'm going to wait till the last fucking minute and then probably not sleep for three days and start yelling like it's everyone else's fault. Like... Why are you guys making me do this at the last fucking minute? Jesus fucking Christ. I'm going to do this whole thing. All of these deadlines are self-imposed. And I'm the only one who's making this fucking hard for myself. You know? What are you going to do? All right, everybody. So with all of that shled, this is the longest intro I think I've ever done. Possibly. And now we are going to go and talk with Mindy Simmonson. <laughs> So, Mindy, you are in Wyoming, but you're originally from California. Yes, I moved to Wyoming a long time ago, <laughs> 15 years ago, I think. Yeah. Yep. And so you, were, you were in Northern California, right? Yes. Yep. Tracy by the Bay Area. Have you been back there since? Yeah, I used to go all the time to go visit friends and family. I haven't made a out there in quite a while though i miss it sometimes but wyoming is my home now 
like what is the main difference between that part of California and Wyoming? Well, when I first moved to Wyoming, everybody thought that I was weird because I would say, that's hella cool. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know about hella. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Wyoming, get with the program. The weather, like right now, is the most beautiful weather you can imagine in Wyoming. Oh, it's, it's so good. 60s today it's beautiful and comfortable but in california it was pretty miserable <laughs> it yeah. was so, but it's the opposite the winters were nice in california and mm-hmm. they're terrible here yeah <laughs> yeah it's pretty hot and sticky right now for sure which is weird for california but it it is a thing so here we are what do you do if you don't mind getting into like your life a little bit like what what do you do I am for work I work at an elementary school during the school year and I have summers off which is nice but I work in a uh, special education room and work with small groups and it is really fulfilling yeah yeah and that's awesome like I'm doing something important which I love yeah so and do you do you miss it during the summer or are you okay during the summer uh by the end of the summer I'm excited to go back and see all the kids and the staff and teachers yeah yeah that's but awesome it is good to have a break too. Yeah. As the year gets to be long. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's talk about your stuff. So you had, well, first off, you were in um, the Poetic Anarchy Volume 3 book. So that was cool. Yeah. And then you and you had a poem, at least one poem in the blood rag. And yep. then you had um four poems in Bloodshed Review number one. And then you have the center section in issue two. Yeah. Um now can you talk about what skeletons is about and how you um, wrote it and how you put it together? Sure. Um, Skeletons was written in mostly in one night during a Zoom writing session. And I thought of the idea for Skeletons, the first poem, and then all the other poems kind of branch off from that. Mm -hmm. And then, or most of them do, and then some branch off of the second poem. Together, they kind of make a skeleton. Nice. The first poem is about skeletons in the closet, like a classic saying and metaphor. Mm -hmm. I kind of tried to build a world around it and um, relate it to me and my life. And then from there, it talks about fears and uh, mental health and there's also bits of light in there like what keeps me sane yeah what kind of stuff inspires you what kind of stuff do you like to write about oh lately I've been trying to think of a metaphor that relates to my life and then write from there and usually I try I really love horror poetry or fiction and so usually it goes towards the dark side I guess but not always yeah your your poems because like your dark shit is awesome and we've talked about this before like I love your dark shit and then you have a lot of stuff that is like kind of like coming of age stuff like Mm -hmm. from like college and all this other stuff but I think one of the things that you like really excel at um is like kind of like your pastoral poem like your poems about 
like where you live the landscape the like nature like all that other stuff like it's gorgeous when you write that kind of stuff i try to write about anything that i have experience with the beautiful things that i've seen in wyoming or um on my family ranch that sort of thing is it hard to write about things that are very emotional for you it is a little bit hard but mostly i love doing it mm -hmm. because it's like working through it i yeah. think my poetry is like therapy like mm -hmm. i read and yeah, pretty much I read in order to escape some hard feelings and things I don't want to think about. And mm -hmm. then I write poetry so that I can actually work through it. And it really like lifts my mood and, and makes me feel better about things if I get it out. Yeah, like um, like that helium balloon poem in the first bloodshed review is like fucking heartbreaking it's just beautiful like i love that poem i was gonna ask you as far as like it being like kind of difficult to write about personal stuff and stuff like that is do you find it harder when you get that stuff out of you to go back and read that stuff or when you read it, does it feel like it's fixed? It feels like it's fixed for me. Yeah. Well, not. <laughs> not a hundred percent. It's bittersweet. But it's still there, but yeah, I can look at it like that. Also, depends on how I'm feeling at the moment when I'm reading it. Mm -hmm. it back in a dark place, and it's like, well, then I don't read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I know how that goes. I know how that goes. Well, why don't you read a couple poems out of Skeletons? Like, what are your favorite ones out of there? Well, I feel like if I'm going to read from Skeletons, it has to start with Skeletons. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the spine of the collection. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it's what everything else is based on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then I have a few other favorites, but I, I'm going to start with skeletons. It's the only starting place. Skeletons. So many skeletons in my closet. Ones I don't even want to admit are there. How can there be so many chains rattling, wanting to get out? Putrid smells emit from behind the sliding doors. This one is too fresh. It's raw and it's hurting. It wants me to suffer for putting it there. Really, so do I. So that's nice. Now you are, like you read a lot of horror stuff, right? Yeah. And like, go ahead and plug your channel too while we're here. Yeah, I have a booktube channel called Mindy's Book Journey. And I review books, mostly horror, also fantasy and science fiction, anything that is like an escape and brings me to a new world. So how long have you been into horror? Oh, about seven years is I started getting back into reading. I didn't read anything. Yeah, as a kid, I liked horror movies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess it goes back to then for horror. What was the horror book that got you back into reading horror? I read the exorcist that's one of my favorites still yeah i do like possession stories <laughs> do you feel that like um possession stories are kind of freeing in the sense that like the possessed person gets to do whatever the fuck they want and it's like i always wondered about that like if like one of the vicarious things that when you read something like that or watch something like that it, like as fucked up as it is and as awful as it is like there's a part of you that's like man that would be awesome if i could do that for just like 10 minutes and not get b for it that'd be awesome <laughs> yeah i wish i could crap <laughs> down the stairs <laughs> turn my head around nope. <laughs> oh my gosh what other poems out of there did you want to take a look at and read oh let's see i think i will do the world the world inside my closet is a very scary place 
You don't want to be stuck there in the darkness in a swirl of emotion. Terrifying skeletons grasp me wherever possible to transfer their many rattling chains onto me. In this case, misery does not like company. So don't step foot in my closet or you'll be stuck like me. Dude, I freaking love the because when you see the title, you're like, oh, the world. And like I when I first start reading, I didn't know what I was gonna be coming into. But the world inside my closet, you have like the world is this big giant huge thing, and then you have a closet, which is usually like this little tiny sort of room inside of a, another room. But when you say the world inside my closet, it paints this picture of if you go into this little tiny place, it's so vast with the unknown that you could get fucking lost in there. And it's just like, as soon as you start that poem, it's just like, you're like, and you're like, you've been like teleported, you know, it's like some shit, dude. I love it. Yeah. That's kind of like, I've been I, this whole collection. I tried to make it. So each poem is from a word in skeletons or else, the second poem. I tried to make it the poem about the word in the context of how it was used in skeletons. So yeah, child was in the second poem, closet. Closet is talking about the closet and how it holds the world. So yeah, the world. Yeah, I really dig how interconnected all the poems are like they really are like this goes from this to this this goes from this to that like they're very closely connected in general do you like writing like that or do you prefer just like doing like one poem and have that be your thing I loved writing this chat book mm -hmm. I was down to that first poem had so much inspiration for me yeah that like I still have tons of words that I could keep going on this concept because I just it has endless possibilities for me. Yeah, for real. World. I have tried doing it be again and it hasn't quite been the same. Okay. Like that little like, like you've tried it this you've tried it doing the same topic or like something different? Something different. Yeah. Coming up with the first poem is the tricky part because it has to be the perfect thing that can go on forever yeah what advice would you give somebody who wants to start writing but hasn't done it I have been there I wanted to write but I didn't know that I could I thought I wouldn't be able to anytime I tried to think I had ideas but I didn't know how to make them into something more and it just came down to believing that I could sitting down and writing whatever came to mind after I wrote one poem it's like a hundred other ideas came and I wanted to write more. It was just a matter of believing in myself that I could do it and just doing it. Yeah. Once you open that gate, dude, everything comes to like running out. So like that, like you write the one poem and then it's just like, blah, like it all just like comes pouring. That's awesome. I'm seriously so freaking proud of you. Like just all the stuff that you've done in like really such a short amount of time. Like, it's amazing. So, good job. It's been about one year writing. You're killing it. Good job. Project Broadside. Mindy's got a poem in it. Yep. <laughs> that poem is about uh, a news article that I saw in Wyoming about a man who was arrested for having video cameras up in some woman's bathroom. I had to write about it. I wrote first about what I thought about it and then I wrote another poem from the perspective of that person and what that kind of invasion of privacy would be like yeah like the vulnerability in that poem is kind of terrifying invisible eyes invisible eyes that's right yeah, yeah, yeah no like I really love the way all of the broadsides in that thing look I can't wait for you to get it. It's just neat to see how everyone like use their vision to put their poem together. 
on the sheets. It's really cool. So looking forward to that. Skeletons is in Bloodshed Review. Number two, There She Blows. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. That was good. Well, thanks for having me. It was fun. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying hello. I'm saying, and that was our talk with Mindy. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't even know what the fucking part of the show this is. Look at me. So um, I guess we'll just get right into the butt plugs let's start plugging some a am i right guys am i fucking right it's fucking raining men over here and ladies nice nice so nice nice so nice okay so let's get into those shout outs i want to give a big thank you to motherfuckers over there on patreon michael cedar harry and monse thank you guys so much I want to give a big thank you to you motherfuckers over there on the YouTube. Thank you, crew. I want to give a big thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to Jan, to Dev, to Ethan, to Julia, and to Lauren. Thank you so much. You guys are fucking terrific. Just fucking fantastic. Now let's give a big thank you to the people whose things drag on the ground behind them. Over there in the Anarchy Crew. I want to give a thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Minnie, to Thomas, to Tim J, to Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam, to Chase, to JH, to Jessica, and to Jason. You guys are the fucking shit, and you make all this happen. And then for the biggest of the fucking thank yous, that goes to none other than the number one chappy. And the chat book of the month club, Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. You're fantastic. I miss you. I hope you're doing well. All right. Now, if you want to join the YouTube thank you crew, you could do that by clicking the join button below this video. And if you're not watching this on a video, go to my fucking YouTube page at Matt Wall. Figure it out. If you want to join the Anarchy crew. When you click join, it's going to ask you what tier you want. And the Anarchy Crew gives you a ton more shit. Like those fucking weekly streams, dude. Like those weekly fucking Zoom calls. Plus some discounts on my shit and stuff like that. But if you want to be the burgerst of the swinging dicks. And you want all that stuff and fucking more. Like my fucking chat books my work and fucking like everything that Poetic Anarchy Press fucking does you gotta join the chat book of the motherfucking month club figure out the abbreviation for that I don't fucking know whatever it's called alright everybody and make sure to pick up a copy of Bloodshed Review number two with Mindy Simmonson's center section chat book skeletons printed on see-through vellum paper chef's fucking kiss guys it also has great work from bunny wild and rich boucher you cannot ask for anything more but you will so we will be doing this again in august actually this might actually air in august so i don't even fucking know what's happening so with that said keep buying our fucking books Type hard, everybody. And I'll talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you. Ooh, that was a good pop, dude.